So one of the topics that people um, often are interested in is a thing called complex uh, PTSD, and there's a there's a few different definitions of that. One definition is just just severe PTSD, so having very severe symptoms. Sometimes you would refer to that as as complex PTSD. Another way of looking at that is is a common comorbid disorders. An example would be a mild traumatic brain injury or a concussion. Oftentimes it's the same event that occurs. Someone's exposed to a, a blast, for example, the aftermath of the blast might be part of what uh, led to the PTSD, but there's also likely to be a, a concussion that occurred at that time. Um, other common comorbidities in it, things like, like suicide. We know there's been some you know, high rates of suicide over the, you know, since 9-11, but certainly over the past few years, you know, suicide is a, is a common symptom that goes along with post-traumatic stress disorder. Good news is we know if you get effective treatment for PTSD, the risk of suicide goes down significantly. And for those that do a PTSD treatment, we, we found over time with research that um, you don't have to exclude someone you know, if they're at risk for suicide, that you know, part of what can help reduce the suicide is to get really good care for the PTSD. So that's, that's something we've learned about that. In the military, um, Another part of complex PTSD is the fact that there's many different types of things that people might be exposed to. It's not like with civilians where there may be one event that occurred. In the military, there might be two, three, four. There could be hundreds of different events that have occurred um, across multiple deployments, for example. That adds complexity to it. So um, for, for, to some extent, treating combat PTSD or deployment-related PTSD, it's more difficult than regular PTSD, um, but it can be treated. It just means it's more complex. It takes a little more care and thought going into it, but even complex PTSD can be effectively treated.